G'day and welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna to talk about buying a secondhand box lock side-by-side -side shotgun. So, side-by-side -side shotguns are not actually that popular anymore because we've got all these, you know, bloody straight pulls and bloody uh, lever release push button fucking tactical fuckwittery. Um, but in my opinion, the Anson and Dealey box lock just one of these, is uh, still a pretty viable shotgun to use. Now, I think they look nice, they look elegant, they shoot well, and they're just a bit of fun to play around with. We're gonna talk about what to look for if you're looking into getting a side-by-side, -side, um, and just a few little checks that you can do here and there. Now, we have two shotguns to look at. For our examples, this one here is a Julian Arana Lasorda. Uh, Lasorda being Spanish for the snipe, the Snipe being a uh, game bird in Spain. You'll see these Julian Arana shotguns around a fair bit. Um, there was a shitload imported into Australia around the 1970s, and they're actually a pretty good shotgun. You'll notice that um, a lot of these Spanish shotguns are gonna say Eber on the top. That's the place where they were made. Now, everyone knows how we've got like this Turkish shotgun factory conglomerate where you know all of these Turkish shotguns come out of the same area. It's the same thing in Spain. It's a factory complex or a factory it's a town with a lot of factories in it, right? So a lot of the things are made in that area where you might have one factory putting together receivers, one factory doing grips, one factory doing wood. You know, they're all gonna be assembled together um, and given a different name. Now, Julian Arana was um, obviously a shotgun maker from a long line of gun makers in Spain. Um, and these are all hand assembled um, and put together and whatnot. I believe they're even hand checkered. So you're actually getting a pretty bloody good shotgun um, for what you're paying for it. So that's the first shotgun we have as our example. The other example we have is a BSW Model 35F. Now, BSW used to be called Simpson, became BSW and then went back to being called Simpson. Cool history of that company, uh, which I want to do a full video on because this is the second BSW shotgun I've got. I have a Model 35, the base model, in the safe as well, which you would have seen in my what's in the safe video. Essentially, it became BSW when Nazi Germany took over the country. Well, the Nazis took over Germany, I should say. Um, and they took Simpson, which was a Jewish owned company, and made it BSW. Now you're gonna see on a lot of the ones in Australia, it's gonna be um, electro penciled into the top, which is hand engraving, the word Simpson. So that way Australian buyers knew what the bloody hell it was because it was only BSW between like 36 and 45, I guess. Um, and then after 39, when the war started, we couldn't import these anymore. So a lot of the ones in Australia are gonna be made between 36 and 38. So they're quite rare-ish. Anyway, more history of the BSW shotguns in another video. So this is our second example. So the reason I have two examples here is because one of these shotguns is in a good state. One of these shotguns is not in a good state. So let's run over what we're gonna look at and how to check over these guns before you make your purchase. So let's look at the Julian Arana first. Now, obvious thing straight off the bat that you're gonna notice is where someone's tried to do a grinder fit recoil pad and they've actually ground the stock. You can see it all the, way, all the way around here. There's another big fucking grinding patch there. The recoil pad isn't actually fitted, I don't know if you can see that, but there is a massive air gap between the recoil pad. You can probably even see my face through that, between the recoil pad and the wood. And that is because the wood is curved and the recoil pad is designed for a straight stock. Um, yeah, not the greatest, that's a shitty Hoag thing, so that's probably gonna have to come off. Anyway, that's the first thing I'm checking is stock finish is a bit poo-poo. But with stock finishes, they can be redone. So that's not something that I'm really going to disqualify buying a gun for, is a little bit of stock work. We can see the checkering is a little bit shit house on this side, which is from wear from the hand. You can see how fine that checkering is. You can see how fine that checkering is. 
it is actually quite nice. So you've picked it up, you've looked it all over. Though from the outside, it doesn't look too bad. The elephant in the room is the fact that someone has enamel painted the barrels on this. Now, this was kind of a common thing I'm finding from like the 1960s, 70s, where uh, farmers are like, you know what, I'm sick of cleaning this thing and it rusts all the time, so I'm just going to enamel paint it. Don't do that. So on the outside, everything looks good. Still got some color case hardening color to it, which is nice. It has wear marks on this side though from being stored, I'm assuming wrapped up in a, um, you see the striations across it? So I'm assuming that's from being in a gun bag and or wrapped up in a rag in the safe or under the bed or wherever the bloody hell the farmer kept this, but that's fine. Now, we need to check a couple of things. So everyone's gonna pop it open and you're gonna see people are just gonna go, oh yeah, cool, well, you know, opens and closes. Yeah, it's a shotgun, cool. There's a few things we are going to check. Now, if you're gonna look at a shotgun, maybe take some snap caps with you. You can actually check the firing of it because you do not want to dry fire a box lock side by side, particularly if it has dog tooth strikers, which we'll get into in a minute. Now, one of the tertiary looks we can do is between, one thing we can check is between the standing breech and the barrels, there should be a clear seal in there. So no light coming through. So you can't actually hold it up to the light, look through there, can't see anything. Now, if the gun is completely off face, you will see light through there. You'll also feel flex. Now, I'm flexing this this way, and there is absolutely no movement in there at all. So that seems to be on face. Normally you would actually check on face with a set of feeler gauges, but I highly doubt that you're gonna take feeler gauges into the gun shop with you. We can actually hear that when it closes, it has a nice shutting noise. It's hard to explain, a nice click. What I can do though is I can show you the BSW because that does not have a good sound. All right, so see how it just doesn't sound right. It sounds a bit dull, it sounds a bit dinky, whereas this has a nice click to it. It sounds right, it probably is right. All right, one thing we can check as well is, does it go to safe? Yes, it goes straight to safe. So we know it's got an auto safe on it. All right, obviously we're gonna fire it. So let's disassemble it. And this is something you can do in the gun shop. Most gun shops are gonna allow you to do this. If they don't, they're probably hiding something. So on this one, it has a button there. All right, barrels off our receiver. Now the first thing I'm going to check is going to be the barrels because that is where you're going to find straight away whether this gun is worth buying or not. So we have our lugs which we'll get into in a second. Cross bolt goes through there. All right and what we're going to do is we're going to give our barrels a ring. Now I've seen people do it with the fore end. You can do it with that I prefer not to because you can actually dent the forend, but you do want something wooden and or um, rubberized. So we have a screwdriver here. All right, so you can hear a couple of things here. One, it has a ring to it, high pitch ring. It does actually have a bit of a rattle, which means there's something probably loose in one of the ribs. All right, so that actual rattle was the ejector. All right, so there's your ejector there. All right, so what I did then was held it down with my thumb, which got rid of that rattle. All right, if it's ringing, it means that our ribs are all laid on and soldered incorrectly. So we have kind of have really three ribs on here. We have the top rib, which goes the full length. We have our two under ribs, usually one forward of the catch for the forend and one to the rear. If it doesn't ring, one of those ribs is loose and you can go through and find that. We'll cover that when we talk about the BSW shotgun because that has loose barrels. Um, all right, a couple of things you can check as well on our lumps. Here we have this cutout here. Now I'm not gonna use all the technical terms because it might be a little bit too in depth. But this part here, this little circle, 
is what hangs on to this cross in there. Now, if this has been brought back onto face because it's been off face, there's a couple ways you can do that. One of them is shimming in there, one of them is changing the bolt in that, or the crossbar in that. And another way is actually with a punch and a hammer is peening that over. If it looks like it's been peened, it's been brought on face in a fairly incorrect manner, which means it's probably not very good to buy. Same with our bites in here. So these, sorry about the camera being all out of focus. These little square cuts here are your underbites, which is where in here, where you get your locker. If they have been peened over as well, um, and or you know hit with a cold chisel or whatever, to make extra metal flow into and re reduce the size of that bite, that is bad, and that means that it has been brought back onto face in a dodgy fashion. All right, on the bottom of your barrels, you're also gonna have all your proof marks and all that sort of thing, so it's probably a good idea to check that stuff, particularly if it's a side-by-side, -side, just to make sure that these are not Damascus barrels and this is not black powder-proofed instead of nitro-proofed. If it is nitro-proofed, and you pretty much can't fire um, nitro cartridges, so modern cartridges through it, you're stuck to black powder, um, unless you do some weird reduced loading stuff. I do believe there are some out there where you can fire reduced load nitros out of black powder. However, check your proof marks. It's a good, um, there's a couple of good places online you can check that stuff. That's a good thing to check. All right, so we've looked at our barrels. Our barrels on this one are pretty good. All right, looking at our receiver. Now, this is the standing breech, or the breech face, this is what I was talking about before. Now, to know if it's dog tooth strikers or not, as a general rule, uh, dog tooth strikers will not have any bushings or disc set strikers in the face. This has kind of faux ones. So from photographs, if you're looking at this online, from photos you might think that those are disc set strikers, they are actually not. It's just grooves cut in which is a gas evacuation. So you can see there's a line straight out there. It's a gas evacuation. In case you have a pierce primer, the gas is going to come out off the breech face instead of going back down into the head of the stock and blow your stock out, which is obviously very dangerous for your face, your hand, and your stock will pretty much die. The benefit of disc set strikers is um, your firing pin is separate from your uh, cocking piece or your hammer or whatever you want to call it. Um, and essentially it creates a valve so it doesn't let pressure come back in and destroy your stock and or you. It doesn't mean that's a bad thing, it just means that um, generally these are gonna be a lower proof. Um, so this is not a three inch magnum or a three and a half inch magnum gun. Um, and that's one of those things that I'll put in for those extra beefy shotguns. If we move our top lever, we're gonna be able to see, you can see those moving, that is what locks into the bites on your barrels that we just looked at before. All right, we can see we've got a green of type cross bolt, which is a round one. If it's square, it's a Scots, I believe off the top of my head. This is a green of cross bolt, which means it's a third bite, which means that this is a fairly strong locking up gun. I prefer guns with a green of cross bolt. That's just my personal preference. All right, so that's pretty much all you're gonna be able to check in the gun shop, right? They're not gonna let you take it apart any further, and you really don't wanna do that, particularly if you don't know what you're doing. All right, so we've looked at this one. Let's put this back together, and then we'll look at the BSW. All right, so let's check all of this over again. From the outside, this shotgun looks a hell of a lot better than that Julia Runner. We don't have enamel paint all over the barrels. Um, our recoil pad is a kick ease and has been put on correctly. Um, so let's have a go through and really rinse this over. All right, so as I said, our recoil pad is fitted nicely. Our stock is, it's dinged up and whatever. It's an old gun. Um, it's about 90 years old. Now, well, the checkering looks fine. This is actually flat top checkering, which is pretty cool. Slightly different from my other BSW. Now I can see something straight away, just from looking over the top of it, right here, which I actually didn't notice before filming. There is 
a couple of pit marks, and it looks like a faint line. Now, what that's telling me is this tang has probably snapped at some point, and that has been welded and refiled. Now, I'm looking at that because there's no bluing on any of that part. You can just see a couple of faint lines from a file, and also that pitting. The pitting is when you weld, and there are air pockets within the weld. So, that's not a bad thing, but I just know that this has had some maintenance done to it. Now, this is rattly. I don't, the, the, I don't know if the microphone's gonna be able to pick that up. But the whole thing rattles, which tells me it's kind of a bit loose. Straight away from looking at the screws, I can see that some of the screws are not clocked correctly. Now on a shotgun, let's have a look at, okay. So, screw heads should be clocked all facing that direction. So slots are all going there. Some of these are canted off angle. We have screws and lock screws that are not timed together correctly, like right there. So what does that tell me? That tells me that this gun has been taken apart by someone who didn't really know what they were doing and not put back together correctly because everyone who takes these apart all the time knows that you always time up the screws because that means they are torqued correctly. So that's issue number one. All right, so let's, let's keep going. All right, so we've been through this before. This one sounds like shit. We're looking down. Now this one's a little bit different because this has side clips here. Now the side clips mean you can't really see through the gap. So I can't actually test by looking for light gap. However, what I can do, which you're not gonna be able to see on the camera, is like I did with the other one, I can flex the shotgun and I can actually see the barrels and the standing breech moving. So they're like this and they're going ever so slightly, they're doing that. All right, now that's telling me that this gun is not tight, it's off face. So let's pull this one apart. This one has a different type of catch, which is on the front there. All right, let's ring these barrels. All right, see how that sounds dead? There's no ring to it. All right, so that means that one of our ribs is loose. So we can go through and have a look for that loose rib. All right, our top rib looks fine. There's no flex in it. Kind of our bottom rib. All right, this is the tiny one here. Yeah, that looks fine. And we look at our bottom rib. And there's the issue, you can actually hear that. So, the solder joint for our bottom rib is gone. So you can hear so it changed the sound. All right, that rib's loose, so that would need re-soldering. Now, when you're looking at buying a shotgun like this, are you buying it as a collectible? You're not gonna shoot it, that might not matter to you. Do you wanna shoot it? Probably. You will need to get that fixed. Um, so take it to a gunsmith and get that rib resoldered, and it'll come back good as new, provided there aren't other problems with the shotgun. So we're going to look at our bites now. All right, they haven't been peened. One thing we can see here though, this is slightly out of round, and it looks like it actually has been peened slightly, all right? So they've probably done that in an attempt to tighten up and bring this back onto face because by changing the amount of material here, it's gonna change the length, which means it's gonna push that back that way towards the face of the receiver. So that's potentially an issue that we will need to address on this particular gun. All right, coming to our receiver. So locking mechanism seems to be fine. This is very, very fucking dirty. And I will show an example of how much shit is in here. That 
that's actually a feather. So clearly this has been used as a hunting gun and there was a feather in the receiver. So her cross pin looks a little bit worn. Now I would say that potentially what's happened is the cross pin is worn because they do wear and they are replaceable. That's worn and instead of changing the cross pin by you know lathing a new one up and sticking it in, they have tried to pin on the barrels. That's something we can fix. All right, everything's all good. This is also dog tooth strikers, not uh, disc set strikers, which you can see there. We also have uh, loaded indicators or cartridge indicators. So when it's closed, it's got a cartridge in it. That will flex, which will pop out the back. So they're working fine. Everything in the receiver seems to be working fine, except for the fact that the auto safety um, is not functioning. These are supposed to, on these BSWs, have an auto safety. Now, what I feel like has happened, particularly seeing that these screws are not timed correctly, is this has been pulled apart at some point and someone has taken the bar out for the auto safety, which I won't know until I pull the shotgun apart, but that's just what my hypothesis is at the moment. But apart from that, everything else in this gun looks fine. So really, the big drama with this one is our barrels need resoldering and our cross pin needs replacing. So, that's that shotgun. So if I was looking at this shotgun in the shop and I wanted, to, let's say I wanted to buy one and not do any work to it and take it straight out and shooting, this BSW would not be the shotgun I'd buy. That Julian Arana, even though it looks a bit shit because it's been enamel painted, I could take that straight out and shoot it because I know that it's gonna function fine from doing those checks. So that's our little down and dirty on checking a side-by-side -side shotgun before purchase. Kind of works with most other types, like over and unders, you can do that barrel ringing check and stuff like that as well. That's just a few considerations to take in when looking at side-by-sides. I personally love side-by-sides. I think they are awesome, if you want. When I go through and fix up these shotguns, I might make some videos on it, if I get time. I might not actually film, you know, every five seconds of me working on them, but I might film little updates here and there, just, uh, just to show you guys what I'm up to. Anyway, I hope you got something out of that. I will see you next video and hooroo.